So the first foray that I had into combining music and comics together was um, a live album that I decided to do with the band. This was the Kilborn EP. And I had written a comic story called The Carousel Couple. Um, kind of just about, you know, an old west town and this couple, a man and a woman who just can't really seem to get their thing together. And instead they're just going around as though on a carousel, circles and circles, unable to get the relationship together. And it ends in tragedy. Um, and that's also sort of the prequel story to um, the album that became Spurs number one. And that's chapters one through four of what I have now dubbed the Kilborn Saga. So for a lot of years, Rundown Hill was really focused on, uh, the concept was to combine one chapter of the story with one song on the records. And um, as time has gone on, um, it just became more and more clear that I was just sort of innovating myself into a corner, as it were, over and over again. Like the concept to combine the two together, music and comics, was a great concept. Uh, but the more I tried to um, put the narrative before the music, the more I was sort of hog tying myself. Um, but I still think Spurs Number One was a really great project, and it's still a project that I'm pretty proud of. Um, the artist on that project was a gentleman, Quinn Salazar. Um, we started with um, a song called A Killer. And this was the, um, kind of depending on how you count the tracks on the record, it was the second or the third track on the record. If you're going by the CD indexed, I guess it's track three. Um, but the first two songs, The Prelude and The Unbreakable Man, I always considered that just to be one song. Uh, but at any rate, A Killer was the first song that Quinn and I worked on together. And I thought he did a great job on that particular tune. Um, I love his backgrounds. They were very, very elaborate. And he also did a really good job creating layers. Um, and the layers then could be manipulated sort of in that light animation style. It was kind of combining uh, Ken Burns style video editing effects along with like shadow puppet work where you have you know still images but they're animated and they sort of move across a background that's precisely the aesthetic that I was after I didn't really want cartoons as much as I wanted motion comics and if you look up motion comics on Google or you go to YouTube and just look up motion comics you'll see a lot of different examples of this um, some of them are very, very cool. And that's what specifically I was trying to make. So the script was in a comic book format with the intent of creating a comic book. And then we extrapolated all that material and went into the editing room. So this is my friend, Eddie Young, who I've known for a very long time. Eddie's a great illustrator. Um, and now he started doing more and more uh, animated techniques uh, at his home studio down in Long Beach. Um, and he was a great help to me putting together um, the first, well, actually, probably like, I don't want to say all the Rundown Hill videos, um, but probably 92, 95% of the ones that have been done thus far. Um, Eddie did the editing for that. But um, I was always there in the studio with him, so it was literally me leaning over his shoulder and sort of directing traffic of how all of this editing material should be put together. Once we sort of figured out the format, how we could make a killer really work nicely, I then asked Quinn to draw the rest of the book. So it's chapters one through four, plus a little epilogue at the end of it. That's the Ghost of My Bedroom song. Um, and that video actually has never been released. Um, and uh, so we, we went ahead and started um, I finished the scripts, went ahead and started generating more and more of the uh, material for the book. And then as soon as it was done, I was down with Eddie again, editing these things together. Of course, the music I recorded in my own studio with the band, uh, mixed and mastered by Scott Manzo up at Rocky Road Ranch Productions, um, who had done a lot of mixing on my material up until the new record that's going to be coming out. That's one that I uh, engineered and mixed myself. Um, anyway, all this stuff put together finally became the Spurs number one comic book, okay? 
Um, and as I said, I'm really happy with most of Quinn's work. But Quinn was the kind of guy I think he sort of waited to the last minute on a lot of things. And um, with that first video, A Killer, I really think that he set a pretty high bar for himself. And then some of the other chapters ended up being rushed. And the really lush and detailed backgrounds that he created for A Killer were not present in some of these other ones. Now, it's not to say that I didn't like Quinn's work. I really did. Um, but um, I did want something a little bit more um, with a higher degree of polish and finishing on it. Um, and at the same time, I wanted to collaborate with other artists and just say, see what other people had to offer and what their contributions and collaborations would, how those things would manifest within the final product. So um, we premiered each of those chapters from Spurs number one uh, in a series of shows. We were doing a monthly show here in Los Angeles. This was... Um, 2014 we were doing these shows and so we would release one video at a time and that then culminated we did a big release show uh it would have been june of that year um we did that at the curve line space gallery my friend tim yalda owned this space and he let us come in and sort of transform the gallery into a projection room and have the band set up next to that and that was really the full manifestation of this concept was it wasn't just about making video content but then to perform live next to that video content. That's what I was really after. Um, and that has worked pretty well, pretty well. Um, uh, there's still a lot of room to grow on this. And certainly as I practiced and went through this format, it was really clear. There's a lot of low hanging fruit of how to improve quality instantly. So I think the, the, the videos that came after that, chapter seven, eight, and nine, the Spurs 2.2 stuff, um, and then the new stuff from the new record coming up, I think is going to show a lot of this evolution. Uh, as a writer, I was more determined to allow the imagery to tell more of the story. And so from a script standpoint, I had to be more explicit with how the panel should be rendered um, so that we didn't need to rely on narrative or dialogue balloons to drive the story forward. Instead, we could rely on the song and the imagery to help tell or tell a tale. Uh, and I decided also to be slightly more abstract and present songs more as vignettes rather than to really lock myself into a sequential narrative. And that was the initial attempt with the Kilborn Saga and to go sequentially chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and have songs that were associated with each of those chapters. Um, so I think the high water mark for Spurs number one was uh, started going to Comic Cons. I started with the Long Beach Comic Con, um, and I've done that con a couple times now. Um, getting a table, selling my books directly to the public, which is really fantastic and and a great way to get to know new fans. Um, there's some interesting things that kind of emerge from those experiences as well in terms of. Uh, how receptive people were to new music, which I found very curious. Maybe I'll address that in another video. Um, but we edited the whole sequence of videos together into a short film, the Spurs number one full album movie. And um, that video is gonna be coming up on this YouTube channel here in a couple of days, okay? And I want you guys to check that out um, to see the full sequence of things. And this was really the intent of how I wanted the band to perform, is with the full sequence of these songs all laid out, and the band would just come in with those songs um, at their appropriate times. I'm glad that we went through this. This film was accepted for competition at the Seattle Transmedia and Independent Film Festival, what they call STIFF. It was sort of a... Um, a counterculture reaction to SIF, which is the Seattle Independent Film Festival. Um, I think some of the people who were not being accepted decided to call it this really isn't independent film anymore, is it? Uh, originally it was called the Seattle Truly Independent Film Festival, and then they decided to add a new category they call transmedia, media that is, it doesn't fit nicely into other categories. And they thought 
my work fit really nicely within that category. So they accepted it for competition and it showed there at that festival. Um, and, and that was really a high watermark uh, for me and for the band as well. Um, so I want you guys to check out this new, um, or I should say check out the full Spurs number one video. And um, there's a lot that I learned from this about how to make comics happen and um, how to create comic ideas to go with the songs. I'll tell you that I, I have learned through this experience, start with the song first. Because there's always gonna be a narrative uh, implication built within it. There's something always implied under the surface with that. And that's what I tried to do with the, the new record that you guys will see. Those uh, videos will start coming out. The first single is May 16th. Um, so you'll see the first cut from the record um, along with its accompanying video. And you can see um, that the format um, has evolved quite a bit. And I think it's for the better. So I wanted to introduce some of the older material and let you guys see sort of where we've been with all of this and then give you an idea of where it's going now into the future. And I, of course, always welcome your guys' feedback on some of this stuff. Let me know what you guys think. Put it down in the comments. Um, but stay tuned. The Spurs number one full album movie will be coming up to this channel here very, very quickly. So stay tuned for some new stuff, guys.